all right welcome back fam thanks for joining us tonight uh be sure to hit that like button on the way in so the topic of discussion tonight is whether blacks are really responsible for the increase in anti-asian behavior or so much as the rise in anti-asian hate so how did this come about i went to google yahoo.com DuckDuckGo, bing youtube and just to round out my searches, I went to Amazon.com just to see if anybody's going to profit off someone else's hurt, which is a growing trend today. We'll save that for a different video. Be sure to hit that like button on the way in. Show some love. So what I ended up finding was quite a few articles and videos of opinion pieces having to do with stop blaming blacks for the rise in anti-Asian behavior, as well as videos uh, showing black on Asian violence. Now, being Chicago based myself, I happen to patronize quite a few Asian businesses as well as quite a few other black people. We patronize the beauty salons, the manicurist, the pedicurist, as well as other businesses that they may have in the community. And very few and far in between have I ever witnessed any violence towards an Asian in my community. You just don't see it as often as the media would have you believe. So I, I began to wonder where are these attacks originating from? Why do I have this perspective and the news is telling me something to the contrary? How can these things be explained? But more importantly, I find myself asking the question, who is to blame if the black community is not responsible for this rise in anti-Asian behavior? So, follow me on this journey. Now, I am aware that the community affected is the Asian American Pacific Islander community. And for the sake of brevity for tonight's discussion, I am going to refer to the Asian American Pacific Islander community as the shorter term of Asians. Uh, no disrespect, I find that this is easier to roll off the tongue. I'm sure plenty of people would understand. So, let's continue. So my first stop was looking at these articles, checking out these uh, YouTube videos that pretty much had the same thing. So there was no information to be gained there. Plenty of people putting out their own opinions as fact, as well as people using surface level facts, but not uh, being specific as to why this is a trend now. So uh, the first thing I did was I went to the FBI statistics site. And I recommend everyone go here rather than having pointless conversations with random folks. It's always best to just go to a verifiable source. So I visited the FBI.gov uh, hate crime statistics site to get the raw data as it's being reported. Now, for those of us who don't know, the FBI has a system that operates with local law enforcement. When there is a hate crime that takes place, the victim has to report this thing to the law enforcement. Law enforcement is then supposed to upload the data to the SRS or Nebris systems. These are databases that are used to catalog as well as track hate crime information and pertinent data, such as what actually happened, what is the location, how it happened, what was all involved, who was all involved. Uh, SRS is the older model. Nebris is the newest model. That information is then used by the Uniform Crime Reporting System. Present this information in a usable fashion to be used by the people or the victims themselves. This is how information is spread. Nothing is actually being controlled at this point. Information is only submitted to the FBI if the police do it or if the victims do it. So if there's any confusion in how that should happen, you need to consult your local law enforcement. Find out what you need to do if you're a victim or you believe yourself to be a victim of a hate crime. Just to make the data more palatable to myself, uh, from 2007 to 2019, I grafted the information presented on the site for victim statistics of racial, ethnicity, uh, ancestry, and bias. Okay, and what I found was that anti-black bias has been dominant throughout this entire time frame. I would wager it goes back even further than that. Now, the report that's mentioned is the Stop AAPI Hate National Report. 
It was conducted between March 19th of 2020 up until March 31st of 2021, which covers 6,603 incident reports, which were reported to the Stop AAPI Hate Project. Actually, the report goes into detail as to the types of discrimination that has taken place against the Asian community, with the bulk of it being verbal harassment at 62% and shunning at 18%, which would be the deliberate avoidance of Asians. Furthermore, the report details 12.6% of the types of discrimination would include physical assaults by a third party, as well as civil rights violations at 10% and online harassment at 7.3%. A large portion of these incidences seem to take place in public streets and parks at 37%, businesses at 32%. Now, at this point in our discussion, it would behoove me to draw a distinction between what a hate crime is and a biased incident is. And for that, we're going to go to pridelegal.com. So a hate crime would be an offense based on a victim's color, race, national origin, gender, uh, sexual orientation, religion, age, ancestry, or disability. A hate crime is any crime committed because of these factors or a victim selected because of these factors. That would imply that a crime would be committed because of these factors. There's an action that moves beyond the bias. Now, what is a biased incident, right? Biased incidences are statements that are offensive or racist, but not illegal. These type of incidences are types of prejudice that are not criminal offenses. Okay, that means people can talk trash all they want, but so long as it's not followed up by action, then it's not illegal. And just to cover up all the bases, according to FBI.gov, a hate crime is a traditional offense like murder, arson, or vandalism with an added element of bias. Now, I could go on and on about who is actually responsible for this hate towards the Asian community. Who actually made the Asian community the face of the pandemic but but i would rather leave my opinions out of this matter okay up until this far we've been going by data statistics and facts we've been using statistics to spot a trend we've been using accounts to further add to the conversation to further submit this is a real thing that this is not something that's just been spitballed or made up to find out who actually is responsible for this rise in discriminatory behavior we're going to look at a group that worked alongside stop asian hate project we're going to look at the virulent hate reports they did a report anti-asian racism in 2020 it's very damning very direct they just didn't go by the accounts of people submitting their experiences whether they would be biased experiences or bona fide legit hate crimes that have taken place they didn't go by any of that what they actually used was 4,337 news articles published in 2020 that identified over a thousand incidences of anti-Asian racism, which would include over 600 incidences of anti-Asian harassment and vandalism, and over 300 incidences of stigmatizing and discriminatory statements. Now this, this goes pretty much hand in hand with the Stop Asian Hate Project. Their findings pretty much mirror one another, but the virulent hate reports would actually point out who is responsible or who is the likely culprit. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you right now, what they have found is that it's not the black community. It would appear that this particular project relied solely on what was published. And for anything to be published, whether it has a negative spin or a positive spin, there is some truth to it. Okay, they use news media to research trends in anti-Asian racism and Asian-American activism. 
They identify, analyze, and map incidences of anti-Asian harassment, violence, discrimination, and stigmatization. They also focus on stories reported in news media that go beyond the big numbers to showcase the thousands of stories of how individuals and communities are responding to the recent surge in anti-Asian racism and violence. So in a nutshell, by relying on news media to conduct their research, they're remaining objective to a degree. And they're able to focus on the specifics rather than uh, anything that would be considered hearsay. Because it's widely believed that if it shows up on the news, then it must be right. It must be true. It must be factual. And what we're going to find is that in this particular report, in this particular project, that the news has not been genuine in its fact findings as to who is actually responsible. And for that, we're going to start at the top down. We're going to look at uh, the political persons who are responsible, not specifically, but the type of political persons that they found responsible in their project. And as we continue, uh, I believe that you'll see that this makes quite a bit of sense. Okay, so starting at the top down, that leads us to the government positions. They found that 179 incidences, American politicians and government officials made stigmatizing statements and supported stigmatizing and discriminatory policies. In the table listed, the politician type of White House executive, 89 of those incidences, which would account for 49% of the 179, came from the White House. 20% of those incidences came from U.S. Congress. 12% from the government. I should go without saying that for any politician to ostracize a portion of your constituency, that is a bonehead move. The political gender of 172 of these incidences that they found, 90% of those being male, roughly 10% being female, with the affiliation being roughly 97% Republican. Okay, so we're, we're all building a, a, a kind of picture as to who is responsible for this. The black community is traditionally Democratic for some reason, go figure. And it turns out that the White House is roughly 50% responsible for this anti-Asian rhetoric. So we're building a picture at this point. Moving down, okay, as we move into the gender, of the gender, which was roughly uh, 300 incidents, 67% of the persons involved in the discrimination were male. When it comes to the physical harassment, 79% of the persons responsible in the 72 incidences reported were male. And when it came to verbal harassment of the 259 incidences identified, there was 69% male. And when it came to the shunning of the 69 incidences that were reported, 53% were male. So it would be safe to say, it would be safe to say that Male Republicans are responsible for this discrimination. Like, we still didn't drill down deep enough, right? We need to get to the meat of the issue. We need to identify a specific person. Uh, well, not necessarily a specific person. We need to identify the specific group that's responsible for this. Because like I said earlier, the black community is painted as the primary aggressor the primary cause of this anti-Asian uh, discriminatory increase. So as we drill down a little bit further, uh, we see a table that says the source, sources of all harassment. And I think it's very telling. Of the 57 incidences that were identified, 77% of the persons that were the aggressor, the causes of these incidences, were labeled as the white ethnicity, with the black being 10%, Latin X being 7%. That's very telling. When it comes to the physical harassment, the white ethnicity or white race is responsible for 75% of the 16 incidences that were identified. 
blacks was responsible for 18.75% and the Latinx 12%. And when it came down to avoidance, such as nonverbal harassment, the white ethnicity is responsible for 93%. Latinx uh, is responsible for 6.67%. Could it be the black community? has always worked alongside of the Asian community. Sure, we have our incidences with Pookies and Ray Rays uh, having a fit inside of businesses demanding this and that, but uh, this country's a melting pot. It's not acceptable behavior, but it surely is inevitable when you have uh, ideals, traditions, as well as communities working alongside of one another. You're going you're gonna to experience these hiccups. Just to move even further, we're going to move on to the sources of discriminatory statements by politicians. Okay, we're moving back up in the chain. And what we see is of the 127 incidences that were identified, 95% of these incidences were caused or traced back to the white ethnicity. With the black ethnicity being uh, 3% and Latinx being 2%. This is very telling. This exonerates the black community of being responsible for this hate, this rise in hate. Okay, we have a objective study that was done by the Virulent Hate Crime uh, Project. We also have a subjective study that was done by the community of the victims themselves, the Stop Asian Hate Project. And in neither one of these does it specifically say that blacks are responsible. And like I said, we have our pookies and ray rays. Every culture has them. Every society has them. It's an inevitable uh, fact. There's going to be some people that are just unable to act proactively in a successful society. But this surely exonerates the black community. To move even further, like how is it that the Asian community became the face of this pandemic? It should be pretty obvious to everyone. It should go without saying. We all had a president that was pretty verbal on Twitter and multiple forms of social media. He went about saying inflammatory comments towards the Asian community, whether they be true or whether they be false, absent proof, facts, anything that has been nailed down and proven to be factual. This man has caused uh, the Asian community to be targeted. How did this happen? When you ostracize a portion of your constituency and target a portion of your population that's a problem why was this seen as being acceptable that that's an even larger problem that's how come we're able to see by the virulent hate project that a large portion of the republican party actually had a hand in going in front of news cameras social media going in front of large groups of people and making these sorts of statements it is my opinion if you have nothing good to say you should shut the hell up if you don't have a solution you should shut the hell up point the blame at folks that's not helpful me personally i don't work in an office where i can constantly shift blame okay me personally i work with a wide array of different ethnicities to solve serious problems that affect u.s citizens on a daily okay and when you work in that sort of environment you have no time you have no time to make light of someone else's race you have no time to make light of someone else's uh, history what you have time for is to fix the problem at hand and that's one thing politicians just aren't doing they sit around drawing uh, lines in the sand, not just politicians, by the way, but uh, local leaders and even people you may or may not work with. Rather than fix a problem, they would rather exacerbate a problem or continue on with that problem. How is that conducive to a healthy society? It's beyond me. <laughs> on that, we're going to call it for tonight. Uh, I've proven my case. I've answered my own questions. And I hope that you all have found it uh, beneficial and informative yourselves. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Be well. Keep on smiling. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.